So you want the best weapons in Cyberpunk 2077, and you want the best weapons that you can kind of get at the beginning of the game. Well, to oh wow, we got three uh, we got three stars on us today accidentally. Whoops! Thankfully, we have the most OP weapons in the game, and even when we have three stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the enemies can't even do any damage to us. They wish they could. Do you want to be a gangster, ladies and gentlemen? Oh my god, look at them on fire. That's just brutal. They're dead and on fire and still in agony. But yeah, with these weapons, you're just going to completely wreck face in Cyberpunk 2077. Now, the first weapon we're going to be talking about today is Lizzie's Iconic Tech Pistol. The stats on here can get really ridiculous depending on the rolls that you get and when you upgrade it. Now, I upgraded mine when I was much lower level, uh, but we did get some really good stats on here with the 5 headshot multiplier and the crit chance. And the reason why this weapon is so good and its DPS is kind of like a sleeper DPS is because it has 17 attacks per second, but it also fires an extra round per shot and increases the number of rounds fired per shot when fully charged. This is the fastest firing weapon or at least pistol in the game and quite frankly is going to decimate anybody now you can get this weapon very easily at the beginning of the game from lizzie's bar now if you don't know how to get to lizzie's bar it is inside of watson and if you zoom in and you go to sutter street we'll actually be able to access this bar now when you first get back into the game after act one you're going to need to go here to talk to Judy, uh, so you can pick it up during that time. Now, the bar is going to be closed, so you do need to wait a certain amount of time to be able to get in. So, it doesn't open until after 6 p.m. Now, once we have waited until after 6 p.m., we can just go ahead and head into the bar. Now, this is also really easy to get, but also surprisingly easy to miss at the beginning of the game. We're going to need to head down to where Judy is, so we're going to have to go to the, to the back of Lizzie's bar. And then we're going to need to access uh, the downstairs. And you're going to do this at a certain point at the beginning of the game but anyways. Uh, but the weapon is actually surprisingly easy to miss. Because you get distracted when you're leaving this particular area. This is where Judy is. And then when you leave this area to go, Johnny's going to spawn like right here at the beginning of the game. And you'll get distracted. But on this table... You're going to be able to pick up the Lizzie's gun. Obviously, I've already picked it up, but it will be right there. But a lot of people get distracted with Johnny popping up and completely miss the gun. Now, one thing that's interesting about Lizzie's tech pistol is that it can't actually be upgraded to legendary. But quite frankly, it doesn't really need to be. And maybe that's why they prevented it from being able to be upgraded to legendary. Is Because quite frankly, at just epic quality, it's already really OP, especially with the right build when you're specced into tech pistols and cold-blooded. It makes it really, really difficult to be able to kill you. Like, almost impossible. And with the right build, you're just going to absolutely love this particular weapon, even with not the right build. As you can see, with four stars right here, we're barely taking any damage. We're one-shotting pretty much everything. And I highly recommend getting Lizzie's tech pistol. Now, the next weapon we're going to be talking about today is Satori. You can actually get this at the beginning of the game when you do the heist, and it's really easy to miss as well. Now, if you did not get this sword during the heist, I have made a complete tutorial on how to actually get it if you did miss it, and I will leave a link in the description below and also show it real quick for one of the methods to get up back to the top of the tower to be able to acquire a Satori. Now, when you first look at this particular weapon's DPS, you're gonna be like, well, I've got a higher DPS weapon, man. I can do more deeps with a katana. I get somewhere else. But what you don't know is that you can already get 100% crit chance. And since this weapon shows lower crit chance on here, it's not really taking into effect the 610% crit damage increase that it has on the weapon, making this effectively the highest damage weapon in the game, or at least for uh, for melee weapons, especially if you max out your DPS. You're going to be one-shotting every single enemy in the game with this, especially if you hit them in the head, because um, you do get headshot damage bonuses <laughs> with melee weapons as well, so I highly recommend picking up the Satori. 
Now, to get Satori, if you missed it, there's a couple different ways. Now, I recommend doing this at nighttime because the lighting at the top is completely broken because it's programmed to be done at night when you do the heist. Now, you can glitch through the front of the building using the car wall hack. Or, better yet, if you want to do it really quickly, just fly up the side of the building, which is what we're going to do now. I do have a video on this full process for anybody that wants to check it out. Now, you're going to need to go to the back side of Compeki Plaza on the left side here. Now, if you don't remember exactly where Compeki Plaza is, it is inside of Watson. And there's a fast travel point here called California and Cartwright. You're going to take this fast travel point, you're going to swim around this barrier, and you're going to pop up here. And you want to get to this back side of Compeki Plaza. Now, there's a reason we want to go to this side is because there is actually a ledge that we can hop onto when we do this little method. Now, you will also need a katana equipped. Any katana will do. It doesn't really matter. And then I highly recommend one other cyberware to make getting down a lot easier, and that is the Karenzikov cyberware. This allows you to slow down time and do like a speed jump, which is super awesome. Now, once you get to this third pillar here, you're going to want to scoot yourself as close to this edge as humanly possible like that. And then we're going to look up. Now, if you have a mouse and keyboard, you're going to hit Alt and mouse wheel down at the same time. And if we do it right, what's going to happen is we'll switch to an invisible katana. Now, this is possible with the controller as well. You're going to hit the cycle button and, um, and, and cycle to another weapon at the same time. And it should swamp uh, just like this. But now all you need to do once you have that is just attack as fast as humanly possible to be able to just literally fly up. This works for any building, too. You don't have to just do it at Compeki Plaza. So if there's any, like, high points you want to get to in the game, this will work. And you just smash this as fast as you can until you get to the top. Now, once we get up to the very edge, you're going to want to keep doing it past the point of the edge. My fingers are going to fall off, I swear. Oh, no. And then jump at the very edge there we go and wham bam thank you ma'am your fingers are about to fall off but you can now get the satori now if you got the krenzikov cyberware like i told you to we can do something really cool and this comes in handy pretty much anywhere in the game we're gonna do a really nice thing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna aim and then we're gonna dodge that puts you into that and then you let go of the aim button during that dodge and dodge again so it's gonna be aim dodge let go and then dodge again and we're gonna get a nice big boost now if you do that quick enough you get a massive boost so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that we're gonna add a jump at the end so aim dodge dodge dot whoop see we didn't do it quick enough we want to make sure that we get that dodge so aim dodge dodge again and then jump at the end and it'll launch you off the edge and you can fall right into the water and then you're done now this next weapon, you can do well over 2 million damage with if you spec into sniper rifles and stealth. This is the Overwatch sniper rifle. Now I'm not spec'd into uh, sniping and I'm still doing 203,000 damage with a headshot. And you can do substantially more if you stick inside of stealth. I've seen this weapon do well over 2 million damage, but unfortunately I don't have the tech points to be able to, uh, to spend into this stuff. But this is actually a sniper rifle that is silenced. It is the only silenced sniper rifle that you can get in the game. And it is available when you're doing Pan Am's quest line. And it's very easy to get. You're literally just going to automatically get it at the end of one of Pan Am's quests. Now, when you first get this, it is going to be like a blue quality. Uh, but you can upgrade it to legendary and then you can upgrade the damage from there. Now, it comes with 247.6% crit damage. We get bonus ricochet, ricochet damage. Now, you can probably get higher headshot damage multiplier on this if you roll for it, but you're going to have to spend some time doing that. Now, it also has 74.85% crit chance, and it comes with the only silencer that you can put on a sniper rifle in the game. Now, you don't need to romance Pan Am to get the sniper rifle, but you do need to at least be friendly with her and do what she wants. Now, during Riders of the Storm, you're going to have to save Saul, and if you do save Saul and complete the quest, you're going to get a sniper rifle at the end of this quest line. Now, next up, we're going to be talking about two of my favorite weapons that I've been using in every live stream for the past uh, week or so, and that is the Overture and Comrade's Hammer. Both of these are pretty much going to one-shot anybody in the game, and is just quite frankly 
ridiculously OP. Now, the reason why I'm going over uh, both of these is because Comrade's Hammer can be crafted, and a lot of people aren't going to want to spend the points to be able to craft an OP version of Comrade's Hammer. Uh, so Overture is going to be the one that I recommend over Comrade's Hammer if, one, you want to be able to reload and shoot faster, but two, don't want to spend the points in crafting to be able to make it. Uh, otherwise, you're going to want to go with the um, with the Overture, which you can get completely for free, and you can buy and upgrade as well. Now, to get your free Overture, you're going to want to head to Watson. There's a fast travel point here called Longshore North. You're going to follow this road down this way. Now, once you get to this intersection, you're going to come down this road. And then once you turn, you're going to see this area here with all of these cargo containers. Now, there is going to be people here. Oh, there is. They respond. Look at that. It's a Christmas miracle. So there will be people here. And all you got to do is just murder them senselessly. And if you head to the back, you're going to actually find the overture right over here. Now, I've already picked it up. So obviously, it's not going to be here right now, but it will be here for you and very easy to get to get your first free overture. Now, if you already picked up your free overture and you want to be able to upgrade and get better stats and be able to just try and get a better one in general, you can get them from one weapon shop down here in San Domingo. And you're going to want to go to the fast travel point that is right here. It's called the Mega Building H4. And you're going to go up to this gun shop right here. Now, this guy is going to have them in stock. And all you need to do is to really cycle through and until you get one that you want. He has also got a really good sniper rifle in here, too. So this one here, this is an overture with 3.5 headshot damage. That's not what we're looking for. We can get much better than that. So if you don't find one that you want, all you need to do is just go ahead and skip 24 hours, and his inventory is going to reset, and then you're going to be able to reroll the stats on the gun. There we go. That's a decent roll on here. So we've got the 1.59... Now, to get the Comrade's Hammer crafting recipe, you're going to need to go to this organized crime activity here with the skull in it in Santo Domingo. Now, there is a Red Dirt Bar fast travel point right near here. Uh, so just go ahead and head over to this location, and then obviously we're going to need to murderize everybody here. And then one of these lovely individuals is going to have the crafting recipe on them. There we go. And just like that, we've got the Comrade's Hammer crafting recipe. Now, this one will be epic when you craft it, but then you can upgrade it to the legendary quality. And next up, we've got one of my favorite weapons, the Divided We Stand Smart Assault Rifle. Now, it's a really amazing weapon, especially when it is combined with a couple of other things. But in general, just smart weapons are really, really good. I was torn between mentioning Skippy again, but I've talked about Skippy so many times that I felt like it was time to include a different smart weapon. I use this one in all of my live streams as well. Now, most of the weapons in the game are going to be able to one-shot pretty much everything, depending on how you have built your particular character, but there is just something about having a smart weapon with the fire rate of an assault rifle and the ammo capacity of an assault rifle that is just really, really broken. And I absolutely love it. You don't have to aim. You can just basically autopilot the game, and I find that really fun. So, the divide this, uh, we stand is actually really easy to get. You can get it at the beginning of the game and then upgrade it along with your character. So right now, I've got it maxed out at 1,377.6 DPS. It comes with a 50% crit chance on it, which means you're going to have almost 100%. I think you you can easily get 100% crit chance with this. Then we have 171% crit damage. The poison chance, even if you just touch somebody with it and they don't die, they're going to like take cover and then they're just going to die from the poison damage. Then we have a really high headshot multiplier on here as well. Now, the location we're going to is right here, and it's the Quest Stadium of Love. Now, this is the most uh, redneck... America party you'll ever see with guns, booze, and dancing. Now, there is a quest line attached to this where we can talk to these dudes and do all sorts of things, or we can go absolutely cray cray and murder everybody here. It's going to be completely up to you how you want to play this out, um, but we could also just try and snatch it up, but we will just have to murder everybody. I think now that we've done that, we can actually just loot it. So, we got the divided we stand. 
So there's a couple different things that you can do with smart weapons or really any weapon in the game in general to turn them into a one-shot weapon. Now, some of you may be watching this video and being like, but dude, I got this weapon that does like two million damage. You suck, bro. Uh, congratulations. You're officially doing like 1.9 million more damage than you need to one-shot anybody in the game. There's quite a few other things that you can do to make really overpowered builds. Like right now with the smart weapon, we don't really even have to aim. We're just gonna one-shot everything in the game, and it's ridiculously OP. And all you have to do is just add one thing to it. Like right now, we can get as many stars as we want, and nothing's gonna kill us unless we somehow manage to get exploded by something, which happens quite often in Cyberpunk 2077. But there's one thing that you can add to any weapon in the game, or just to yourself, that'll make any weapon in the game be able to one-shot everything. And you can attach it to your operating system here, and it is a quick hack called Short Circuit. At Legendary, this Short Circuit has more DPS on it than any other weapon in the game, and when it's at the Legendary quality, it adds a passive effect to all of your weapons, even your fists. Any weapon will now have the passive effect of Short Circuit, which will add that damage onto there, making it so you could even one-shot anything in the game just by punching it. So, add that to your cyberware, and literally you could use anything in the game, and it'll be just as good as dealing 2 million damage. But anyways, I do hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.